And now let's talk a bit about Bitcoin, blockchain, internet, and related technologies. As many of you may know, uh, some of the students I give these classes, they are not really into and related with the, the uh, phenomenon of Bitcoin. But let's remember that October 21st, 31st, uh, 2008, it was released and published the, the white paper of Bitcoin, okay? It, white paper is a proposal. It doesn't have uh, uh, any formal uh, issuance comparing to the law. It is, as mentioned, it, a proposal of peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And then January the 3rd, 2009, it was released, the Genesis block code, all right? Important, and as you can see here, and if you have studied the, the phenomenon, it mentions specifically the situation of the bank crisis and financial crisis of 2008. And we'll see this, that it's important to have in mind, because Bitcoin has a phenomenon, has a direct reaction to what is the financial system. Let's remember that when we talk about the main products, political products of states are legislation and money. So Bitcoin is directing its efforts towards changing uh, realizing, uh, analyzing the financial sector. You'll find people that says that say that it's uh, the, it, the aim is to abolish all the financial system. We'll think we we think it's uh, that's not impossible, but at the same time, we have a new player in town. Okay, in the game, and Bitcoin is this great new player. And we, we ask, what's the difference in 2008 and we're living right now in the financial, traditional financial system? We've seen what's going on with the Silicon Valley Bank and we'll see the effects in Signature Bank, but also in Europe, in Switzerland, we have the situation with Credit Suisse. So believe it or not, we have to rethink a lot of institutions, a lot of ideas, a lot of thoughts we had towards uh, political institutions and financial institutions and the relation of that. Again, Bitcoin voice paper, for sure you have read it and seen it. Uh, we have this uh, idea, uh, when I say why we, I participated, but in Spanish, the Bitcoin voice paper. So all the friends of yours that haven't read the Bitcoin uh, paper, they can hear it, hear it from the voice paper in Spanish or in English. And again, it's important to be back and the idea of crypto anarchy or crypto uh, culture. It has the Crypto Anarchist Manifesto. Important to read, even though you believe or not in that idea. It is a fact that this technology goes beyond the boundaries of the states. And we're not talking only about the geographical boundaries. We're talking about ideological boundaries. We're talking about legislative boundaries. This is a new idea, a new territories unexplored that we don't see if the states and their political uh, products, such as legislation and uh, money, are fit exactly like we know. This was uh, written by Timothy C. May, and he died in 2018, well, recently. So he could see more or less this uh, phenomenon. Of course, 
This is followed by the declaration of independence of cyberspace. So we'll see cyberspace has a new dimension where humans and citizens, uh, they, they collaborate each other. And we have new rules, new rules that are issued and their sources are different than the regular idea of rules. When we study law, we are, we are studying a lot of sources of law and we see the contract and the customs and the legislations and so on. And even we have this difference uh, between the continental law and the common law. We'll see that this idea of sources of law are being reshaped with this phenomenon of digital environments, the cyberspace. And then comes this. We will change the idea of the culture of authority by the culture of justification. And what justifies better than mathematical uh, procedures. And this is important also to have in mind when we consider all these uh, the artificial, artificial intelligence projects because they use logical, mathematical, logical in order to get those answers, GPT for instance. But we'll see that it comes more and more and more, the generating products we are going to get from these agents. And this reminds us, this situation with these guys. I don't know if you have uh, had the opportunity of reading about Giordano Bruno and uh, Galileo, Galilei, Galilei, how, how you pronounce it. These uh, classes are much better in life, so we can, and in presence, so we can share with this. And what happened with these guys? Well, Giordano Bruno, let's remember that he, he was taken to the process. He was executed for simply suggesting, well, affirming that it wasn't the earth that circulates the sun, but it was on the contrary. That was the, the, the earth circulating the sun and not on the contrary, sorry, that the sun was around the, the, the earth. So he was taken to court, to justice the process of law. And the same happens some years later with Galileo. Galileo uh, um, was, you know, affirming the same that right now we're, you know, more than, than used to, that it, it was like that. And the thing is that probably you haven't heard of, of this guy that was Roberto Bellarmino. He was the prosecutor. He was the prosecutor by the law, Let's remember that the theocracies and uh, the idea of law, that it was a product of now nowadays of the Congress, but the, the church has this source of law. So right now, what we're seeing with these uh, ideas and new laws and, uh, and uh, Bitcoin is we have a secularization 2.0 before we have the church, then the state, and then we're going to have a new kind of societies where the states probably remain, but not how we know it right now. And that's a thing of constitutional law. Important. And if you are in Paris, please go in Pont Neuf and you'll see this uh, plaque that says that Jacques de Molay was killed, was burned in March 18th, 1314. And who was Jacques de Molay? He was the last great Templar master. And why he was taken to trial and executed? More or less for what's happening right now with the Bitcoin. The Templars, they lended money to the monarchy and the church, and well, they never want to pay it, and he was uh, taken to court for, his, uh, her for heresy. And please go, if you're in Paris, and visit, and you'll see that plaque. And last year, I was there. So we'll see how this phenomenon is beyond the idea of legislation, but it's political uh, and, and ideological. And from this perspective, we'll see how many books we have uh, under that idea. 
we have different brains or will have different brains. The humanity have different brains of those that are created. Probably many of you are younger than I am and you are used to the this digital interaction. But digital interaction is not only the instruments, the technology. It's the cultural changes that comes into our, our minds. How it here says we have or you'll have or humanity will have different brains. But also we have uh, authors like Andreas Antonopoulos. And let's see what he mentioned here. This isn't about nation states anymore. This isn't who adopts Bitcoin first or who adopts cryptocurrencies first, because the internet is adopting cryptocurrencies and the internet is world largest economy. Is it the first transnational economy, it needs a transnational currency. Again, this is not about concerning and conserving the same idea of money as a political product of the states. It is another idea of new states and new money. And it's interesting because I had the chance of conversing and having a conversation with uh, Andreas Antonopoulos about rule of law and how it's affecting the idea that we have of rule of law. Again, let's remember that this was given and prepared for uh, classes of uh, constitutional law. So what is exactly Bitcoin? Is it a money or currency in one way? Is it an asset? Could be. Is it a computer software or program or a hardware? Well, we'll see that the mining procedure is hard hardware, or it's a normative system. Interesting. Bitcoin is a normative system, open and voluntarily, voluntary. So that means that we can probably think about new and other situations of uh, normative systems. Is it a form of governments, governance or is it a government? Is it a consensus, a protocol, or is it a bubble? Well, if it is, from what? For who is a bubble? Is it the devil? Search. There are some uh, cases of Bitcoin is a devil. Well, it's very simple. It's very simple. What is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is just a universal, a national, permissionless, unmutable, decentralized, secure, transparent, transparent digital, Private public, public, it's interesting that incontrovertible data base is a public ledger, among other things. So this Bitcoin works for everything. Probably like this uh, dictator from Venezuela that mentioned that the constitution works for everything. Yes, what all depends. It works for everything if you use it as a constitution to control the state and control the powers. Luca Pacioli, I don't know if you have heard about his work. He invented this double ledger that is used today in accountancy. And important here is that he, in his uh, works, he used to have the, 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 the assistance of this uh, student he had, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, who had made, in, he, he made these uh, graphics of his works. Really great. And what is it good for? Well, we'll see that once you use the Bitcoin as a unit of exchange, you can use it as a currency beyond the idea of money of the state as a state product. So it has different dimensions. It has one techn technical, computational, mathematical, economic function, legal, juridical, code is law. So we can have the idea of Bitcoin as normative system, sociological dimension of Bitcoin, political dimension, of course, philosophical and spiritual dimension of Bitcoin. The same that is going on at this moment with artificial intelligence. So let's have another set 
of conclusions to move on another uh, set of phenomenons. Bitcoin is a mathematical product that uses decentralized dynamic computing power to generate and to sustain granting power supporters part of mathematical product of that result. This mathematical power can be economically valued and traded with all consequences thereof. A protocol on internet, secure, open, democratic, transparent, non-state, non-large corporation own. Interesting, remember the third state, OCAE, monarchy, church, third state, well, states, big, large corporations, us, own or control layer of internet, a new internet, Web3, that can generate and support other application layers or multiple purposes where immutable information is kept that can be verified and not only trust on. Trust and verify, we'll talk about later. And works and worked for programming money, but also gaming contracts, digital ID, supply chain, medical, financial, commercial, legal, administrative, and judicial files, arbitrations, election processes. Not that we're talking about uh, soon we'll have in Venezuela, Argentina, and in the United States uh, elections. Property, important. We're going to talk about property, loan, mortgages, and so on. Let's stay with these conclusions and we'll see how it works in other situations.